All right, folks, today I've got a fancy one for you. This was sent from Swords of Northshire, or Northshire, and it's a Tai Chi saber. It's a modern thing. It's not an accurate historical sword. And it's interesting because this is sort of like Chinese Dao meets European longsword. And uh, if you want to know more about it, you can ask my friend Sword Sage. If you're not aware of his channel, I'll link it down below. He knows a lot more about Chinese swords than I do, which you know, in my case is not a whole lot, even though they are pretty interesting. And uh, this, I very much like this setup here with the, the fairly large S-shaped guard. I mean, large for a Chinese sword, you know, most of them don't have large guards. Um, ring pommel. Fairly wide blade. So this store, Swords of Northshire, sells mostly build-your-own custom katanas, but they also have a number of Chinese swords. And uh, this one here definitely caught my eye because of just how fancy and, and pretty looking it is. The blade is made of 1095 high carbon steel, which obviously is always a good choice. Well, for certain sword blades. Let's put it that way. It's quite hard for some types of sword. It can be a little too hard, but if properly tempered, nothing at all wrong with it. I don't know exactly what they temper these to. It doesn't say on the website. And this one has a very noticeable distal taper. You can see you know, right at the base here, close to the guard, it's a lot thicker than it is closer to the point. So that balances it quite well. This feels extremely light. In fact, this feels lighter than it is. It weighs 1.3 kilograms or 2.86 pounds, uh, which is not heavy by any means, but it feels even lighter. This feels like it's less than a kilo, basically. It feels like you, can, you could easily use this with one hand because of the way it's balanced, which is right here. But maybe before I get to the handling, I should finish talking about the blade. You know, I should really structure these more. <laughs> Do like one talking point after the other consistently, but instead I just go blah, 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 you know, whatever I, <laughs> I want to talk about at the time. Okay, fine. So they also come with free engraving, optional, if you want it. I got my channel logo engraved on it. And... The edge is hand polished. It's a pretty high polish. It's um, kind of like a, a dull mirror polish. Like you can definitely see your own reflection in it, but uh, it's it's not not a full mirror polish. And it's a nice gradual taper from the spine to the edge. You can see it's got two narrow fullers, properly finished. There's no flaws in the shape. Overall, nice grind lines. Uh, the point is well shaped, and I like that it's not overly thin. Like it definitely thins out and tapers substantially to be nice and pointy, technical term, but it's not a flimsy point. Here's the fit of the guard. There is a noticeable gap right there and more pronounced on the other side. And I would prefer if that was smaller, considering the price point. Speaking of the price, hold on to your seat. This is $839.99 US dollars. And because of that, it bothers me a little bit. I would not criticize this on, say, a $300 sword, but over $800 could be a little better. And there's a tiny bit of play in the guard. You can. I don't know if you can see it really. Like I, when I wiggle it, I've mostly moved the entire sword. I can just feel it a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it. There, so there's a little bit of play. The other fittings seem perfectly tight. The fit on the handle is very good. You can see the bamboo peg there. On the website, it says it has two, but I, I'm not seeing the other one. Uh, perhaps if it's under the fittings, but that would be somewhat counterproductive because then you cannot remove it. 
So it looks like there's actually only one. It's in the center, which is which is good, but I would definitely prefer to see actually two. If there is another one, it's not accessible, so I doubt it. So I don't know why it says two on the website. Anyway, the grip is pretty thin, as you can see. So it's fairly wide, but relatively thin. It's, based, it's mostly oval in cross-section, and that gives you a good, good feel for the edge alignment. The fittings look really nice. It's all hand-carved brass, very well decorated. And quite tasteful decoration. You've got these floral patterns here. So it's not overloaded, but certainly looks quite nice unless you're into the more utilitarian type. And there is a more utilitarian looking version of this, which is also substantially cheaper. So if that's what you're into, then I would recommend looking at the other one. They, they seem very similar otherwise. Okay, now I can talk about the handling. So as I said, the weight is 1.3 kilograms or 2.86 pounds, and it feels very, very light. Uh, using it with one hand is not a problem at all. And uh, the, the shape of the grip, as said, allows you to feel the edge alignment very well. It's, it's really comfortable. It's an ebony grip, by the way. And uh, same as the scabbard, it's also ebony. So very nice looking wood, feels really good in the hand. And uh, I, I have zero complaints about the handle. I mean, I would maybe... If I were to design or redesign this, I would probably make this a little thicker, maybe, but it's not really necessary. As it is, it functions well, it feels good. Uh, if it gets wet, this might become slippery because it is just a smooth surface. There, There is no texturing or wrap or anything like that. I mean, you could add one yourself. Uh, as it is, when it's dry, it actually gives you plenty of traction. So grip is not a problem uh, under you know, ideal conditions. It's quite an agile sword. You can quickly cut with it. You can change direction easily. And cutting, well, beautiful. I've managed some deliciously smooth cuts with this. Let's put it that way. Like the kind of cut where you don't even really feel it. It just glides through the target without any noticeable resistance. And the interesting thing is this is what they call the heavy cutting edge. I had the choice. I could either pick the light cutting edge, which is extra sharp, or the heavy cutting edge, which is more durable. And this is the heavy one, which I went for, you know, just thinking I don't want to damage this. So let's go with the heavy duty one. And yeah, this is what you get. I would actually recommend going for that unless you really plan to only do light cutting. So water bottles, tatami mats, you can, you can get away with the with the light cutting edge. That must be just insane. <laughs> that must be super sharp. Uh, as it is, the heavy cutting edge is perfectly, it's more than adequate really. And I did some cutting with a, a wooden dowel inside the tatami mat. Oh, nice. No problem, again, zips right through, pretty effortless, and uh, it's very enjoyable to cut with. So that's great. <laughs> the blade is kind of oddly flexible. At least my, my first impression when I unboxed it was like, whoa, <laughs> this is this is kind of kind of on the wobbly side, which is not an issue for cutting because the blade is pretty wide. That's also one of the reasons why it cuts so well. Smooth like butter. It's wide and is not terribly thick, but uh, if you wanted to do thrusts with it, that uh, that would probably detract from that. So as far as I'm concerned, the blade could be and maybe even should be more rigid. As you can see, I can flex it very easily. Now, it is properly spring-tempered, so it will return to true. And there were a few cuts where the edge alignment was a little bit off. Almost. You could see the flex, but it just bounced straight back. However, one thing I have to criticize about the blade. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can just about make it out. Yeah, I think this should show up. The blade is a little bit off center. 
a little bit tricky to see, but it's, it's slightly off to the right. When I, when I side down it past the guard, it's pretty noticeable. And I don't actually know if it came like this, like if it happened during tempering or if this is a result of the cutting. I wish I had checked that before because that would be good to know. Did it happen from use? Was it, did it come like this? Either way, worth criticizing in this kind of price range. And I'll talk a bit more about the price in a moment. Before I do, a few words about the scabbard. This is a heavy duty scabbard. Like when I, when I took this out at first, I was like, whoa, holy crap, this, this is almost the same weight as the sword itself. Uh, what was it? A uh, bit over one kilogram or 2.3 pounds. <laughs> so it doesn't weigh much less than the sword itself. Because again, ebony, very dense, heavy wood. Uh, this feels like you, you could clobber somebody with this uh, quite easily. Definitely a very solid scabbard. More importantly, it's a very tight fit as well. In fact, it's almost a bit too tight. Like when you get to this point, you know, there's, there's a good amount of resistance. And this is really the kind of scabbard that holds it in perfectly. Like even if I shake it fairly hard, <laughs> don't have to worry about it suddenly ending up on the floor. Would have been hilarious if that happened. But um, yeah, so you have to give it a firm tug to get it out. Really good fit. I like that. So yeah, that's about it. Handling and cutting performance, excellent. Finish, very good. Fit. I would say good for the guard and very good for the rest. I would recommend it with some, you know, concerns about the price. Let's put it that way. Because again, this is a lot of money. Over 800 US dollars is quite a bit of money to spend on a sword, of course. And considering this is 1095, it's not a very expensive steel as far as I know. It's not pattern welded either. I mean, to be fair, 5160 is not technically an expensive steel either, but a lot of high-end swords that cost a pretty penny are made of it. This is, I think, where the cost comes from is mainly the hand finishing. You know, hand-carved fittings, hand-polished blade, all of that. So that, that definitely adds to the price. And it is very well done overall with the exception of the few nitpicks that I had considering the price. But it's always a little bit difficult to judge exactly how reasonable the price is because I don't know the production costs. I don't know the, the details. I don't, I don't know the perspective from the business end. Let's put it that way. All I, I know is I have the consumers and the reviewers perspective. And from that point of view, this seems a little bit pricey. I would say that like you're definitely getting very good quality. The value for money could be better, I would say, but I can't really overall, I can't fault a sword too much. Aside from the nitpicks, it's great. It, it's, it's a re really nice sword, good looking, um, does well in cutting and all that. As mentioned, I, I shouldn't repeat myself. So hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out the links down below and have a good one, folks.